Oh, thank God. <laughs> so, thank you, Siri. I know. So, um, no, uh, what I said is I don't think you can have a, a true creative conversation if you really know exactly what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And no. I, yeah. So we are totally going to make this up. Okay. Which is right. No, so I think one of the things we established, Gary asked a very, what is this about? And, 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 and I think one of the things we did talk about was omission is, you know, like many of us, we BS, bullshit, whatever, you know, you're going to race, we can edit and, um, you know, that we, we think we know where we're going to land, but most of it's on faith. We like, we get this intuitive spark and then we land right. where we land. Right. Right. I, and how does that, how's that relate to doing actual creativity and art? You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. you know, I like to ask later. Well, I, no, you might be the man that has some more answers. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, we're we're in a creative conversation about what the making of art. Yeah, what what, what, what turns you on? What you know, challenges? Because Ed and I were having a conversation earlier as well. We can bring it into the, into this conversation because my my career, my you know, my life as an artist in is includes collaborating with other artists yes. because um, I make silk screens and I you know make limited edition silk screens and you know it's been my passion in my career it's my career for since we were talking it started in 1973 when I first got hooked on it but so you know I'm, I'm I know that I'm in a unique position as an artist as a painter. I'm not never build myself as a printer, although that's what I do. So a lot of times I'm referred to, oh yeah, he's the crazy printer or he's the guy making prints. Some people have to call him the master printer. The right? master <laughs> printer, you know. But but that part of it has to do with the collaborative side. You know, and I'll say this early on, just to kind of give it as my in my old adage example. The studios that I have, and, you know, I've only, you know, my studio is to artists what a recording studio is to a musician. Okay. So, you know, musicians like artists have their own studios. They write their songs, they write, do their paintings, they come up with their ideas. But there are very few places where artists can go to have their work collaborated and made into something other than what they're doing in their studio. A painter's painting, a painting, a sculpt, sculpting, you know. Um, so the unique side of my position is that I interact creatively with other creatives who have usually one thing on their mind themselves and, and their work. So you have a personality, you have a, you know, you have an intent, you know what you're doing. But then that other side of me, the other half of me, is an artist and is a painter and is a, you know, creative artist using silkscreen. So solely on my own, I use and embody the techniques that I find to make my own art. But you know, I also became and become everyone's best kept secret because as a master printer, you're privy to that collaboration. And, you know, in most cases, um, it's like what you said, I know a lot of artists, but then I, the artists that I know, and I say I know, I know from the making of their art. Right, you know, so I know them like, oh boy, okay, here they come. <laughs> like, you know, you know, oh, there's a staff psychologist, you know. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna actually do no, no, right. Like, no, I'm not gonna critique your work. I'm right. here. Well, to pray. yeah, right. And that too, it's like, okay, Gary's making a prayer with me. I'm making a prayer with Gary. You know, we get to know each other. You know, you gotta kind of let down the guards, and it's not about whether I love it or I don't love it, or you know. But it's kind of like, well, you know, what do you think? Can you change the color a little bit? There goes the temperament of the artist. You know, well, you know, it's not red enough or it's not blue enough or I like what you did. And, you know, I like what you did, but I like what I did more. You know, um, you have all those conversations 
And then there are some artists which, you know, throughout the 40 years, 50 years, there's some artists who, they don't have a clue what I'm doing with their art. But they jump in and get totally engaged in doing more with it using my using the silkscreen process. And so then you have artists who are like making new art with the process. They're not. Is, is, that, is, that, is that more exciting? Well, I won't say, I don't want to judge or, right. or, but on the spectrum, on the spectrum, right today, where you are now as a, as a creative do you do you do you prefer that methodology where there they, you know someone is 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 digging your vision, not vision, but your your craftsmanship as a as a as a printmaker and incorporating the, that into their thinking is you yeah I mean yeah. I love that and okay. but because of the because of the evolution of creativity, I think not a whole lot of artists understand what that is, number one, and how to interact with it, number two. Oh, like, no, but, but Gary, you're saying something very important. What is that it you're talking about? You're talking about craftsmanship? And decision-making and spontaneity and, you know, drawing and painting and choosing colors. And re- they know how, they know if something's going to look like they're, as an example, if it's, you're making a print, you're working with them. And this is pre-digital age when it blossomed and proved its success the most because you had no way of creating immediate gratification in printing right. without going through all the work. Right, you know, right, the right. The, the, Now the, you're getting the Photoshop, you hit the button, you right. stand there, you watch them out of the printer, and I say, excuse me, this is not the studio that does that, you know. Like, right, 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 right. We we don't print your Photoshop, <laughs> right? <laughs> but we use the technology, or we, you right. know, use the the individual decisions. But so when when I say it, you know, um, there's no judgment if an artist would want to engage one way versus another. I enjoy what I do with other artists' work when they're not here as right. much as when they are. Yeah. It's kind of like mixing a song. You have it all. And you say, okay, musician, you know, go home, go out, go have a drink, go have some meat. Let me work on this. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Give me some space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, people understand that in the music creation, but they don't see it very often in the artistic collaboration. Right. I mean, one of the things that I, and, I'm, and then, and of course, I'm going to, I'm just excited because I get, you know, Ed knows you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know you. So I'm, one of the things that I thought about the word humility, right? Because, you know, one of the last taglines on your biography is like, and kind of like, you're the unsung hero of major pieces of work. Right, because no, no, because you're a collaborator. I say he's the hero of. Well, I call it the best kept secret. The right. best kept theory, well, the unsung hero. The, what, what, right, whatever. So, right, right. But, but, hold on, wait for one okay, second. Sure. Sure. I absolutely want to introduce you guys. The lady is my co-host. We've been working on this podcast, and Gary is a master printer, and we're gonna t- we're gonna take a journey through his life through art through in Waterbury. He went to San Francisco. Came back Guatemala. To the Guatemala. Oh yeah, I went down there. For- <laughs> yeah, the Asia. I, yeah. I, I read. I read a little. I was very impressed by not so much impressed by the fact that you could get on an airplane, but somehow you 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 really downloaded where you culturally kind of sat and uh, and what you learned from those places and those and the, and, where, and the people you engaged when you were there in those different right. places. Right. Yeah. Well, and and again, you know, as I'm saying, you know. I have, I, you know, I was in San Francisco from 73 to 2000, and I had a collaborative printing studio there where I did a lot of work with a lot of different artists. You know, it's... Well, why San Francisco, though? Well, we, I went out there to go to the San Francisco Art Institute, and there was no reason to leave. Right. But it was <laughs> exactly San Francisco in that period. Not in 1973, there wasn't. 
but it was a beautiful city. Yeah, and, and also the climate was right, the collaborative style of the city was right. Artists, musicians, creatives were, you know, pretty much, you know, free reign. It, it was, it also was a city that, a, a place where, you know, printing itself, the idea of, of silk and printing was one thing, but printing itself took hold. There are certain, you know, places in, throughout the United States and even the world where you have people who are involved with printing. It's like, it's, you know, because to me it was uh, just a great city and a great time and a great relationship with the artists there. But they weren't all from San Francisco. They were from Asia, from China, from, from New right. York, from L.A. Because it became a go-to place to work collaboratively mm. with, you know, an artist or a master group. More, more so in San Francisco in the 1970s than here on the East Coast in, in, in New York, let's say. Yeah. Or, yeah. or equal, equally? E equally. And L.A. was like that. But you needed, you needed the confluence of the people who wanted to do the work and the artists. Right. You know, the, I'm talking about printing or, you know. Sure. No, I used to come back to New York because I grew up, grew up here. And I was friends with uh, Rupert Smith, who was doing a lot of Andy's, Andy Warhol's printing. So uh, I used to go over and visit and say, oh, you guys are really crazy here. Look what you're doing. And they said, well, why don't you stay? And I said, no, thanks. I'm going back to San Francisco. No, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why is that? Because I want I, uh, I was a survival mechanism. <laughs> you know, I, I would right. live a good life. I was young. You were How young. old were you? No, I was in the 20s. Yeah. yeah. But, but it was a cultural thing. You know, I had already figured out, oh, I like the Bay Area. I right. like the music. I like the art. I like the people. New York was like, you know, a lot scrappier. You know. Got it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I didn't want to go to sleep in the same room as two thousand sheets of paper. You know. Right, 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 right. And call it and call it home. And call it right. home. But, but again, no, it, what it was about what I do, silk screen, which is, you know, Ed and I have talked too about because we were out in California a similar time, was that um a silk screen studio potential had the potential of being a collaborative, truly collaborative environment where you could get something done, you know, you came up with a result. And then quite possibly, and as you did it more often, you could figure out how to earn a living doing it, you know, right. uh, you, without selling out, without selling oh, out. So you saw this also like as a craftsman, as a practical way to take care of your life as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because, right. you know, it's been some, when I would think, oh, well, what are you going to do to earn a living? I would say, I'm just going to print 10 more of those. <laughs> Let's see if I can sell them for 20 bucks. <laughs> but, but what was yeah. interesting about that time also was that making money for your art was sort of a sellout a little bit. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't, until the rock, it wasn't until the rock musicians decided they were going to make money that all of a sudden oh. artists could now make money. And oh, I thought we were all greedy, self-involved narcissists from the very beginning. I didn't know that. Uh, it was no, a shit. No. Yeah, no, 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 we weren't. The galleries were, or the, oh, okay. or the, you know, the, those who were quote, you know, dealing the the, 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 deal, the, the the power brokers. That's the a very power brokers. Thing. Yeah. And again, what you were saying about the poster, the, the posters. We came out of that generation where. We, you know, we were putting all these posters on our wall and I started printing and I started seeing, well, people wanted to buy a signed and numbered limited edition print. You know, they wanted, to, they wanted a real piece of art, you know, they weren't going to buy the paintings. So, but the dangerous part of that always was how that, along with, quote, I would call them third party people who would like, want to get invested in a project, it could totally dismantle the creativity. You know? Okay. You know, like, oh, no, no, I want you to do it yellow, not red. And you're standing and saying, really? Like, who's in charge here? You know, the <laughs> artist or the money? You know, so there's that... What, you, what, what do they always say? They always say that people with money love to talk about art and artists love to talk about money. Right, right. right but, right. you know, again, I wouldn't 
we don't want to dwell on that intersection as much as the creative one, but you can't have one without the other in certain types of environments. You know. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a very good point. I think naively at the ripe old um, at the ripe now that I've entered my fifth my fifth um, decade of life, I didn't um, that I didn't download that for for a long time, uh, Gary. Like this, the intersection right. between you know money and creativity. I think a lot of a lot of people. I think there is a myth about the poor artists, for sure. Right. There's a myth about well, the poor artists, and a lot of people are still bu- bu- still buying into that. Whether right or wrong, they buy into it. Right, right. Well, it was that, or you only became famous when you were dead. So <laughs> <laughs> then we had a real conundrum. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I learned at a very early age in my creative career was I was apprenticed to an artist in San Francisco, uh, Robert Freed, and that's where I was learning silkscreen. And at the age of 35, while he was opening a show at the museum in San Francisco in 1975, he passed, he died, he passed away. It was an unfortunate thing. But wow. well, for the next three or four years, I kept saying, well, I thought he'd be famous if he was dead. That's what everybody told, told us. You know? right. <laughs> Either dead or poor. You know? And, and they, 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 one yeah. of those things happened really quickly. Right. right. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but it was also a period where everything we did was creative, you know? Like, the creativity had its own currency, I think, back then. Well, it also, you know, what, when you brought up, you know, New York, what made New York very exciting in the early printing days, silkscreen as well, was it, you know, the pop artists especially, you know, they caught on to you, the idea of using it because it, you know, they could sell them, they could sell a print for five hundred bucks or fifty bucks. Right. Yeah. So once Warhol and you know Indiana, some of these guys caught on to that, they created a market that they were breaking through the barriers of oh look he's making money doing what he's doing right, now. Right, right, right. Nowadays, if we jump really fast forward. Everybody has a licensing deal. Everybody has a brand. Everybody is that. Other. In in the early days of creativity, even if you had the innovation to do those things, you didn't you, do it. You did not have the avenues to, that you have today. And oh, the platforms. You know, but, 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 you, know, you were totally fair. Oh, then they won't consider yeah. me an artist, and they won't consider my creativity. You know. But I think that's I, I think that's a good place to to to, to kind of locate a little bit. Maybe Ed, I don't know if you had another question, but yeah, this little business. Okay, go on. Yeah, here's my question. But do you think people took more chances back, creative chances back then, when they when not everything had to be just perfect, and you know, you tried new things, like you guys, right. you and Bob were making postage stamps. Well, yeah. but but again, everything was newer as well, so that. Yeah, but I also, but I'm also hearing from from a, from what I understand, and you tell me if I'm way off. But there's something like we now have the affordable art fair, or we call we call it accessible art. You know, to kind of like b- break down those barriers between what they consider to be elite level blue chip artists, and we can't afford that original. So like this kind of thing where everyone is like democratizing art. A, a printing is actually a little bit more democratic. Like we can, I can afford it. Everyone else. Can, so not everyone, many people can have access to a right. piece of art that they otherwise would not have been able to if they had to def- de- 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 rely on buying an original. Right. Well, right. and that fu- that that's what fueled printmaking and silk screening a lot in the 70s and the 80s into the before this democratization happened. Right. It was in, in the artist's hands to do, and with, much to what you were saying, Artists were being innovated among themselves, so they were using collaborative and methods to do things that they normally would not do on their own, like right. Rauschenberg was, and 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 Jasper Johns, and and Warhol, and the the pop artists were a lot freer in spirit, like you could try anything. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. In other words, you sit down to traditionalist. Right. You sit down to make a master painting 
and there's all this pressure. And, and then you, and you sit down to possibly come up with two or three prints and there's a little bit more, you know what I mean, flexibility and right. openness. Interesting. Right. right. Less precious, less precious. Right. And the artists who would paint, quote, the master painting, they were, they were tied a little tight. <laughs> Whereas the experimental painters who were just throwing it to the canvas and seeing what stuck, Right. They were looking for collaborative environments for that type of work. Got it. Got you it. know, because they didn't know what it was going to look like when they were making it. Right. You know, they're like, anything goes. Oh, but I like that. I don't like it. But again, much like a photographer, like it's, you know, works in, there's a difference when a creative person actually has a real good vision of what they themselves like or what they do. And so they can quickly identify, yeah, 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 I like that. Or, you know, or really, right. you know, so you can move on to doing the next thing, next thing of it, you know, the next color, the next screen. Oh, um, oh that's interesting. Next, oh, the next color, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I have to say real quickly that yeah. Gary, like I was taking pictures the whole time, but I would look at Gary's picture and just, you know, his thing is all about color. And I would look at his pictures and I'd say, oh my God, what if I think I'm a photographer, you know? <laughs> you were really a photographer, you know? You really had a, just a kind yeah. of, I, I still remember a sunflower picture you took. Right. You know, it was laying down. You always had just sort of great angles on stuff. Well, thank you. Right, you know. Well, I think if you're creative in one place, you'll apply it, right? I think that's what most people might not know. Like, even if you cook and you call yourself a chef, that you're gonna bring that to that that thing that you do to assemble ingredients. You're gonna do that in when you take a picture, right? Right. right. Like you know, I think most people. Um, I think one of the things that we like to do, just to give a little background while we're talking about why, what, and why what this podcast is, is like like start accessing and giving other you maybe maybe alternate formulas to what people might think are like those artists have some secret. That they, they that they own and and we don't know how to tap in to their creative juices and everybody doesn't and, and most people that I know they don't many people don't acknowledge their own creativity, right? right. You know what I mean? And they think like, oh, um, I'm a nurse, um, and I just do these little things on the you know I do these little wild baskets on the weekend, right. and I but I'm a nurse. Right, but, but but if an artist was doing those baskets, then I'd be an artist. You know, these all these labels, right, that have nothing to do with creativity, actually. Right. No, they, yeah. they, and more often than not, they'll get in the way of being creative, whether you're, <laughs> whether you're a nurse or quote an artist. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think there's a lot of hidden. You know what I? But but I wanted to just hop on, and then I'll let give it to Ed um to ask. Um, just take is um think so much about the ego and artists and when I read that line or I just got the gist that you were in service of of other artists how does that like in like how when you in your own personal work because you do have your own personal work and your own what you say is ownership to your own artistic vision versus this collaboration which I think you're very very it, it is it's clear that you enjoy it and love it. But so how does that, you know, speaking about ego and creativity, how did that, how do you, if you manage it all, I'm just asking a question, you don't, maybe you don't give a shit, you know what I mean? Like between, you know what I mean? Like being in the behind the scenes, being in front for your own work, what does that have any different value for you? Um, well, you know, I, you know, that's a good question in terms of, and, you know, there's an emotional value in preserving my own interests and my own ability to be creative on my own. Mm. It, you know, you can imagine how many different artists I've worked with who I now understand how they make their art. <laughs> Not, yeah, I mean, I literally know how they make it because I remade it for them. Right, right, I right. I it all apart and put it back together. And it's like, oh, this isn't complicated or it is complicated. It doesn't matter. But because of that sense of commitment, I very rarely would take from or 
be influenced by other artists' work that I was working on. While, while simultaneously doing your own work. Right, but by simultaneous, we're talking over a 40-year period. Got it. So, like, I'm not always doing my work when I'm intensely involved with doing something for Bob Bruin or something for Alfred Leslie, but because it takes all my creativity to focus on what I'm doing for another artist. And then there are other artists or other creative projects that are less intensive where I can, you know, go off and, and exercise my creative options to do some of my own things. But I'm careful, like, you know, I could, oh, yeah, I could use what I just did with this guy. And he's not over here. Like, you know, yeah, woo, that was a, right, right, right. You know, you're like, okay. You know, they got boundaries. You got you got good creative boundaries. Well, and music and recording studios have those same boundaries up to a point where if that quote producer or that person crosses over, or as we've now learned and found out, which is very rewarding for me to listen to some of the stories of the early music producers who are actually making their own music and their own songs and their own music, even while they became famous for producing someone right. else's Tomorrow's music. Is up. Right. It's right. a completely different sound. Right. But they but they become acknowledged as, you know, okay, I guess he never knew that so-and-so was the really invented that sound. Then right. he gave the sound to those to that artist. Right, 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 right. And you're like saying, oh, no, no, that sound came from the musicians. And you're sitting there saying, no, it didn't. That came from the engineer. <laughs> it you came know? from collaboration. Right. Right. Well, so as that, you know, became more evident in one world, I'd be able more comfortable about saying, you know, someone says, oh, well, look at that. Look what the artist did. And you say, no, that was my suggestion. He liked it. And now he's known for it. Right, right, right. But I don't go there. That's not my driving force. What is your driving force? Is the relationship with the person and to, create new, and to create new things or create something so satisfying between us that it doesn't matter all of those, yeah. um, you know, labels and attachments. Right. So, wow, that's an opposite. What is different when you're doing your own stuff? Like how, like you do this collaborative work and it has one kind of feeling and then you have your own work. Uh, well, I think part of it is, is I preserve this other, like uh, this other part of cre visual creativity that I very rarely offer right. into the mix with other artists. And yes, I do, you know, I'm mm -hmm. playing Color, remember we yeah, talked yeah. about blending color? Well, you know, there are certain artists who I'll use it with because I love the joy of right. like, okay, here, yeah, you know, this is like but, there are no trade secrets, really. Right, right, you right, know? right. Because if they wanted to appropriate, they could appropriate. I got it. All right, right. And there's a difference in visually appropriating on a literal sense and appropriating the technical know how on how to make it right right you know um you know two houses on the same block could be you know look identical but one is built by hand and one is built like over at the factory and shipped over and shipped yeah over and <laughs> yeah exactly i know right? yeah is there a different emotional attachment that you have to doing your own yeah. work yeah i find that there is no. i find that there is i mean yeah um and there's a period of time where I cannot connect emotionally to my own work because I'm very involved with other projects. But got it. You know, there's my and my work, you know, speaking of it is is softer. It derives itself from living in California, the colors of California, 
the skies that I saw. So do you, for your own work, just, this is the part I don't remember. You primarily paint your own work or you also use your own techniques in the, in the creation of your work? Just no, I use silk screen. You mean silk And yeah. And, and then I, and I also paint, but right. I came to painting by using silk screen. You know, I wasn't a painter first. I was a silk screen artist. Gary, can you just, for, for our audience, and whoever's listening, can you tell us in a couple of sentences what a silk screen is? Because I don't think everybody knows what it is. Right. Yeah. We, can just <laughs> <show>. <laughs> well, we, we did some, no, but, some video. Right. No, no, no. But I think you can also well, describe it in someone can imagine. Screen yeah. is a, a, it was it used to be made of silk. That was why it was called silk. It's a frame with fabric silks, you know, stretched on it. And you adhere and some kind of image to it, and you push the ink through the screen onto the paper. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I know. I just wanted our, our, our audience to have a visual that it's not hand painting on a canvas surface. Right. But well, it, and it allows for the replication of more than one. Because, you right. know, you push the ink onto one piece of paper, and then you put another piece of paper, and you push the ink. But for our audience, before you have your thought, for our audience, that What's the magic of that is the ink, the, the volume of ink, the weight of the ink is never exactly the same from print one to print two to print three. So that's where the beauty comes in, that, that small, those small incremental variations and the idiosyncrasy right. between each print. Right. right? Well, what, yeah. what Gary does at times is really, he'll put down 30 colors, you know? The well, 30 screens. 30 screens. You know, one right. screen at a time. And, and if the registration's off, <laughs> that's it. You're done, right? Well, and that's why, you know, um, talking about how art is made and talking about that end, I think because it's a visual learning process for people, right? it's hard to discuss that aspect on a podcast. Right, right, right. We're on a video you could you could see holy cow that's what they're doing you know right um which is why in, in the case of this studio here in jersey city um when melissa and i moved from the country in connecticut we were in a barn and that's after moving from california i wanted to build a studio where i could where the doors would be open for people to come visit and see how prints were made because it was at this part of my career that I said, you know, I can explain, but, a pic, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, I ironically, come into the studio, see how it's made. That's amazing. <laughs> and what's amazing is people who, so many people, and they don't realize it, like a doctor and a lawyer, you know, a professional, oh, yeah, I did that in high school. I really <laughs> like that. But right. I couldn't do it after high school. But they don't forget it. Right. And, but when they see it, they remember it. You know, it's like that class, right? Like, that class oh, was after yeah. gym, right? right. And I was doing it in the garage when I was a teenager. You know, it predates graffiti or any other. You know, because it, it was a road kind of like, uh, you know, but it's you know an exciting way to work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, so you started out in San Francisco during the, the Roxy. Did, did the music, uh, the music had some influence on you, I would say. Oh, shit, music always. Yeah, yeah, music always does. And now you've moved into, you know, now you're in New York and you've connected with the hip hop community. You want to talk about that? Well, but again, I, I connect visually to a community, you know, in, in some cases, a smaller community. But I was working with uh, an artist, Say Adams. Um, oh, I know Say. I know Say yeah. very well. I and don't, Say, yeah. Say was, you know, early Def Jam kind sure, of. Sure, sure. But he wouldn't even talk. Like, oh, no, no, that's nothing to do with what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing these collages. And I said, come on, give me a little history. Because, again, I want to know the people. I want to know the person. Right. right. Um, and Say and I have been working a lot together. And then he brought by Jeanette Beckman who's an early hip-hop photographer uh, from London. Um, so she did a lot of the 
early the first photos of Run DMC and and uh, you know a lot of that genre. And I said, well, we should make some silk screens of some of these photos. Wow. And simultaneously, I was also working with Bob Bruin, who's a uh, premier rock photographer, who's now uh, he just wrote a book, but. And Bob and I were working on some silk screens of one, his Led Zeppelin piece, of his John Lennon piece. And Melissa and I were taking like the opportunity to make silk screens with certain photographers, not because we knew what we were going to do with the silk screens when we were done, because we were trying to transport the attention from it being a photograph yes. to it being a work of art. Right, 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 right. And, and uh, that's interesting because photography, that there's that, yeah, yeah, th that's a whole other conversation about where right. photo photography lies as art versus paint on a surface relies on, right? That's a different well, conversation. Well, when you were talking about the, 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 the hip-hop scene, we ended up uh, working with another artist, Charlie Ahern. I don't know if you know Charlie. I don't know. I don't know. He that did name. the movie Wild Style. Okay. Back in the early 80s. And Charlie was like a history lesson. He was like, so, and we were doing these wacky silk screens that came out of one of his films, and they were of the early hip hop days, you know, Scratch City. And I would go to Charlie and say, listen, Charlie, I'll be honest with you. 35 years I was in San Francisco. I'm a rock and roll, I'm a rock and roll fanatic. <laughs> I love art. I've worked with a lot of artists. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> and I don't know the difference between, you know, LL Cool J and, and Run DMC. Right, right, right. Except right. if you're on TV. Right. Except if you're on TV. Because well, Gary, you got a lot of land, a lot of ground to cover. Right. Yeah. And they've been over. Yeah. I've been here with ice teas been sitting in right. the corner. So, right. so it wasn't so much that I, you know, engaged in that community. How did you find me? Well, because I wanted to, you know, kind of started. I think with my bumping into Say Adams, and then Say bumping into Jeanette. But Bob so say what? So this is interesting because also Say. There's, a, there's this confluence, especially with the record labels. I think Say was art directing, like like graphic yeah. design, art direction, yeah. and all this stuff starts to, like, that's like the silk screening world in right. a lot of ways, and, right? And, like, and, yeah. And, and again, then I met, you know, so I began this thing of, you know, much to your point is because I wasn't in New York during that creative period that scene I was in San Francisco which for all intents and purposes I was working with a Chinese artist from Beijing I you know art is fun in that the artist transports the stories mm. and the stories generally you know breed the creativity like right. you know and so some of the best storytellers are happen to be some of the photographers because they have the story of the photo and they have the story of the shot, you know, you know, John Lennon on the statue yeah. on the Empire State Building, was, or you know, LL Cool J with the radio with the boombox. You know, right, 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 right. The story of yeah. it. I have a I have a quick little story. I actually bought I have my I lived for 30 years in the apartment. The person who lived there before me was Jam Master J. Right. And I found all his they opened up the air conditioner of my apartment, <laughs> and all of a sudden, his some lyrics fell out. His police card fell. You know, the, you, know the, <laughs> you know, you get a thing from the police saying you're a friend of the police. The he had all these Polaroids. They still have them. You know, they just had fallen out of the. Uh, it was like they fell out of the sky. You know. Yeah. So I lived yeah, in yeah. an apartment, and it was just it was just funny because no, the, doorman in my build, the doorman in my building were like, "Oh, really?" Yeah, <laughs> and they don't know what kind of institution right? Jan Maps J is, right? Yeah, they don't know. They don't. They, they 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 don't know what an institution is when they. But again, yeah. so so what I what I've done creatively as an as and a side part of my my studio career 
is I've created projects or I've commissioned projects or however they've come to me that all individually tell different stories about different, different periods of my life, but also different artistic periods. You know, the, the, um, we were talking about, the, you know, in San Francisco, it happened to be, it was like the um, back, you know, it was like a, the back door to Asia. And so I ended up working with artists from, from Taiwan and from, from uh, the Hunan province back in the 80s, before wow. the art world was enamored by, oh, here comes the Chinese. Now, I was this about to say, you China. were, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, so, and, I, and I was involved with the first generation wave of, of migrant, of, you know, these artists who were fleeing China. Right, versus, right, right. Versus, okay, we're going to, you know, we're Chinese, you know, there was Asian, um, you know, and you didn't, you had to learn, but it didn't really matter what the influence was, you know, were they influenced by us or were we influenced by right. them? But there were creatives who I've had years of working with. We didn't speak one word of English together. And we made, wow. We made projects. That's amazing. You made music. Yeah. You yeah. Made music. So, so art is basically transcends language. When if you have to, if you're in a band, <laughs> like, what the, red or blue, you know? Yeah, no. That's why it's a, on a podcast. You're not kind of yeah. Uh, yeah. That portion. What What are your like? What are your, some of your challenges in you know working as a collaborative? Like you are a creative person by nature, and and you get to express your so two creatives coming together from you know different points of view. I think the biggest challenge is the, isn't the beginning. It might be the middle, but it's definitely the challenge is to get an angle find okay are we are we good uh, an agreement and like we agree like yeah we really like what it looks like right you know? and i'm surprised sometimes i've been with artists who they have stopped me when i'm only like three steps out the door and they say i love it just stop <laughs> i've never <laughs> seen anything like this and oh said, wow and i'm like oh, yeah. and, yeah. when, and, and sometimes do, do, do you go back and say listen this is not fully baked this is actually yeah. not baked fully baked Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and they'll say yeah, too right. bad. It's fake. It's <laughs> and then I think it, you know, don't get your gift cards in the mouth. Right, 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 right. Done. right. It's done. I'm like, you know, I was gonna add a whole lot more work to it. Or it just takes forever. And I I have a yeah. personal question. You have a just from Zoom. And I'm and I'm 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 the vulnerable guy, by the way. I'm the one who talks about it's feeling very, very so <laughs> you have a very no you have a, i'm just i'm gonna and i i, I kind of i think i'm gonna I, I feel empathic empathic so you seem like a good natured man like as a no because i know the assholes from this company and the pressure from that company and all that stuff gets in the way of that's another real pro part of our world as creatives right. like the logistics right what have you what do you do as a, what do you do to nurture yourself to stay always, not always, of course, your, your, your better days, your better Gary's on bait one day or then the other, but how do you stay Gary and, and, and come with your essence and like, you know what, no, I'm going to be a little crude. Like no one's going to fuck me and get me out of my, my zone. You know what I mean? Like, right. how do you do that? How do you do that most of the time? It's a good question, but you know, I think I'm gonna answer for it. I'm gonna answer. No, 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 Dad. I want Gary to answer. <laughs> uh, I was gonna let in here. I, no, I can see that. I can see yeah. you were gonna let him get. Um, I want to hear. Sometimes by doing by doing the work. Okay. By doing the work. If you, it, it's kind of like if you stop to think about it and talk about it, you're yeah. almost. You know, you you you're doing you're doing yourself a disservice. You're undermining your craft by even getting mixed up in it. Right, right, right. And and yet every day, or you know, the good days, the bad days, you do get mixed up in it. But right. there are times when it's like when I'm mixing color, when I'm printing, when I've got the next idea, when I'm like because because I'm not solely with lying on my own personal creativity 
to keep my everyday going mm. because I'm collaborating. So I'm relying on the artist or the artist's work. Yeah, you said you, you said it was people. Is the, right. the, 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 you know, I can have someone painting on my wall and I'm working on a print with that artist. I'm deriving inspiration from that painting. Even right. if I like it or I don't like it, I'm deriving inspiration from it. So there's less, you know, so I can keep a forward motion mm. going that I think most creative, visually creative people that's a hard thing to do because yeah. you, you know, you're, you're always self judging. You're always like, you know, right. is this finished? Is it, do I like it? Is it, you know, this, is it? and then you stop and you're like, Oh boy, that was a bad move. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you a little metaphor. We were going across a river one day and, and this is what you're saying about your forward momentum. And I was a little scared about crossing the river and the trick was to go, never stop. Right. You know, Gary would say, you know, just go rock, rock, rock. Don't stop. If you stop on the rock, you're done. Oh, I think we got a book. I heard uh, that was like a book right there. That was amazing. Just but, keep on going. I love it. Well, like, but, you, but again, to provide yourself with the type of environment that you could do that in is rare. Okay. So you're even, in other words, you, because you have to support it, you got to earn a living to keep it going, but also to do it, then you become a lot more conditioned than trying not to let interruption. Stuff. Well, stuff. Let, you know, you get a third party involved with the project, and you know, you kind of say, oh, well, you're working with a create an artist, and you say, okay, well, when so and so comes, let's just not talk about what we're doing. When the very point of him coming is to talk about what we're oh, doing. Oh, no, right, to logistically so talk about something forward. else. Yeah, to yeah. keep it moving forward. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, you know, right. third party is tricky. Um, creating art for, quote, clients is very difficult. You know, commissioned work is very tricky. Um, so I'm not, my, my life and my livelihood hasn't been always, it hasn't been built on, um, like a advertising market or, you know, people who are in, who have to deliver something by five o'clock or. Okay. You know, okay. Oh, good. You know, none of that. Like it ain't done to the fat food thing, you know. To, okay. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. I think a lot of, um, as a, somebody who supplies services, I'm, I always feel like I'm being chased by some fictitious calendar that doesn't actually exist. Right. You know what I mean? But I, but, yeah. but that's, it's good to hear that it, you, you, at one, at least, there's one creative in the tri-state area that is that 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 has a. It seems like you you set the you set the parameters. The and by setting the parameters, you're not setting any parameters, <laughs> right? So you got to. Which is where we started the conversation. Right. Where we started the conversation. <laughs> you know, right? But but again, then you have you know like there was a remarkable clever remarkable time in the, in the studio we did. Um, we worked together with the musician Dave Navarro, and uh, and Dave had a couple projects that he wanted to do, and but he kept saying, "But I want to do them with you. I I, I want to do the work physically." Yeah, and I kept looking at him, saying, "You know, you can't be serious." And he kept saying, "No, I'm serious. I'm serious." I said, "Well, shoot, go and do the work. That's fine. I'll kick back and show you how to <laughs> clean screens and." Don't forget to pick up the ink and, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> paint the floor, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 do it. Damn uh, it. Yeah. Last. No, no, not yeah. only did he last, he got so into it. And, and But we had this interesting thing. He goes, look, I got to go back out to Los Angeles in two weeks, so I only have two weeks. What can we do in two weeks? Right. And I said, shit, I don't know. I got nothing else to do. What do you got to do? He goes, no, no. Okay. So... We'll just come in every day and all I need is a cappuccino and a cafe latte and I, I'm good to go. And you know, Well, the energy, we were working on five different ideas of his at the same time. He was in the back cleaning screens. He was jumping all over the, the press. He, he, he didn't know why I was doing certain things, but would turn around and say, well, I like that. So do more of that. I, you know, well, the, the irony was, and I, 
the part of the beauty of that time period, and I turned away and said, Dave, this, you know, you kind of like commissioning the studio to do all this stuff. I said, what are you going to do? Do you sell the work? Or... And because he was a musician and because he was very well known and he had lived a certain life in another planet, and he says, no, what I do is I begin to use, because he's very involved with mental health awareness and, you know, has a foundation that he helps out with mental health awareness. He said, no, I let people, if they want to donate money to something to do with mental health awareness, then I'll send them a piece of art. Wow. wow. And I said, ooh, we got print up like you know, 50. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that is one of the most uplifting. Generous, generous, yeah, of course. Generous yeah. ways to go. And I thought, holy cow. And I mean, I, I never thought of that added as a layer onto being creative. And yet, I said, so are you creating the imagery around there? He goes, oh, no, no, no. If they don't like what I'm doing, then they don't have to buy and donate. And, you know, right. and move so around. Just, yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, you're looking at that's where the, the creative personality oftentimes brings to the environment, to the studio, just a little offbeat something and if you don't notice it and you don't catch on to it or ask the, ask a question maybe about something else you won't integrate it into the process right which is which is what it sounds like is you really want to hear the story from the artist right. before you print it so you can get i mean do you remember the the, the song we are the world yeah yeah remember the song we are the world sure but so how did we of the world really have everybody came on stage? They had, you know, they were somewhere at the Grant or something. Oh, yeah, Dylan Springs. And, and they all said, yeah, this, we need to raise money for, you know. For, um, what was, oh, for, for, for fleeting children. Right, yeah, right. right. But, but, but that spontaneity among that many creatives and whoever was chomping at the bit to grab the microphone was fun but the result was a beautiful song. That's what happens sometimes in creative collaborations in art. And Those, that's, that's being said way beyond compensation. Right. That's being, yeah. But you don't know it when you just see it in a frame on the wall. Right, yeah. right. So that's where the backstory, and that's why I think the podcast, oftentimes talking about the piece of art be, should become included in, you know, it, it should become included in the art itself in a way where if someone has one of the prints on the wall, they can turn it there and say, you know, I know the story about this, or I know more about it than just what it is. You and I, or you, and, and mm -hmm. I, we might have lived more of the story in certain cases than the art itself than the product right. than the yeah so i want to ask you a question about you've done work like that so you have the COVID posters right that yeah. were that were that had a story behind it right well and that was out of the phone that was during the COVID time where we you know melissa and i realized okay everybody's getting shut down and then somewhere i heard that silk screen was deemed essential and I thought, I said, I'm flat. how the hell is it deemed essential? And I, and, so, wacky. and I heard I was, it's deemed essential because we need to use it to print health and safety signs. Oh, got it. Got it. That, but the signage is so cool, and um, we, Do we have one right here? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, so we started printing these That's guys. amazing. Not only is it amazing, but I want one. You can pop one of those in the mail, Gary. You can pop okay. one of those right in the mail. I love you them. Got them. I love and, it. And I think people actually follow those signs that the, the, the instance of people washing their hands. Right. Well, we did them, but so we <laughs> deemed ourselves, we immediately deemed ourselves essential. We called up an artist and we said, we're essential. We need to, well, well, we need to, we, we need, need to, we need some drawings. And, you know, we need, to, and it happened to be with the artist, Eric Kaur, who, on the press at the time, we had a collaboration that we were doing with Eric Orr 
that was a collaboration that Eric had done with Keith Herring. Got it. And we, we'd gotten uh, permission from the Herring Foundation and Eric and Keith had done a drawing together. And we had figured, okay, we want to bring that work to the world. You know, right. we're going to make silks. <laughs> and I can't believe we all of us said, well, you know, that's, you know, that's one of our art projects. <laughs> so we can't print art because we can get, this is COVID. You're not allowed right. to print art. That's not even right. So we took that one and bumped it back and said, let's start printing. Oh, right. And then we started working with Urban Pathways. And for a guy who's who was silk screened his whole life, and I don't do t shirts. Oh, you, you started know. doing t shirts? Well, no, I couldn't help it because we were putting this message out, Urban Pathways at the time. This is in March of 2020. They have, a, they have 15 buildings in New York and Brooklyn and Queens that um, transition to homeless. So right. they're, they're apartments. In these buildings, they said to us, nobody's reading the signs. Everybody's freaked out. And so we want some upbeat messages. Yeah. Powerful. And once we started doing, we donated, I don't know, thousands of prints and posters. But that's when we started to do the, the New York Strong, you know. How you know, awesome is that? We were that doing space. You know, but but the, the story that Garrett told me about it was people started following the side. People were washing their hands more. Well, because it was whimsical. Yeah, you know, and it was, in, it, was in, it was enjoyable to engage right. rather than like, you know, CDT issued stuff. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that scared the shit out of you. So you're like, <laughs> you know, oh, gee, right. you know, really? Do I need to do this? Or what do right. I do? This way. And about a, two months into it, a woman from, I think it was U.S. News, uh, called us about an article she was doing. And she, you know, excerpt some of what we were doing and saying. But what had happened with silkscreen and is other places had figured out the same thing in order to keep printing. They were going to, so you had, you know, out in South Dakota, they were printing them on the Navajo reservation in San Francisco. They were printing them in the mission district where language became an issue about the signage. Right, right, right. People converted to images. Right. And images with other simplified words like, you know, keep your distance. Right, 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 right. right. Six so, feet apart. Whatever mask. Yeah. Wear a mask. Yeah. Uh, wear a mask. Those are the Also, I'm looking at your desk and I'm seeing Ukraine. What did it say on top of there? Um, United. Well, how did that come about? United. Ukraine, United, United for Ukraine. Ukraine. Well, it's a, in other words, it's our it's our ability to. This is Al Diaz, um, which we did another. Al is the street is on the street all the time, but Al used to be part. I mean, him and Basquiat were Samo. Oh yes, 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 yes. I know Samo. So Samo is Al Diaz is, is the, the living half of Samo. I didn't know that. I didn't, Al Diaz. Okay, I got to look them so up. So Al and Melissa and I have been working on projects together, and we did one if you, it won't go away if you ignore it. Mm. It's a line. It won't go away. And again, creatively speaking, word art, you know, took off, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where everybody got into Messaging. Messaging. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Our, you know, right, right, right. And so, you know, I always like kind of shied away from word art and, you know, like, okay, you know. But when I met Al, I said, oh, no, I, I, he's, he's like the authentic, he's one of the authentic word art guys. I'll go with, with Al and see where, where he takes us. But so we were working on it. Um, uh, you know what? What popped in my head is Barbara Kruger. Yeah, Barbara Kruger. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that part that part that pops into my head is read right, my lips. Another one. Yeah, and, yeah. And that work in itself 
is seeing a better day in the sun now because people are reading, you know, they're looking at it. They're looking back at it. Oh, right, 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 right. Than when it was first created. Interesting. Because when it was first created, it was like, well, what is what kind of artist is going? Well, like, what, what are you talking about? Why, why is, is that art? Right, you know, right, like, right. Why is that art? And you're like, well, it's art because well, it's art. Well, well, it's art if it stands the test of time too. We get to look back at it in thirty years, right. you know, forty years, and, and we've lived that long now. Well, and and again, and that's where, you know, to be so fortunate to then, every once in a while, take a project like. You, you know, with Urban Pathways, if you take a project like to do fundraisers, um, you know, with printing, with silk screen, you know, I can't help myself because it feeds the soul and it sustains that side of the studio, which, you know, is not a, uh, you know, it's, well, not, well, it's the not part, the lights on, but it's making you feel good. All you know, the other part is you like a story. And I we love creating the story, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. So and you know and and your story has been about creativity, and here you are in a lot of years ago. <laughs> and, yeah. and is it still feeding you? Yeah, it still feeds. Oh, good. I have I have another question, and I know we we're probably winding down a little bit, but I have a question about attrition and you know like you you know feeding the soul. Do you think do you have do you do you have a protege or proteges or what, what's your what's your, what do you feel is your responsibility or not your responsibility? No, it, all answers are acceptable. Um, I, yeah. You know, it's funny because I you know I've been, I mean, all, over the all over the long term, over the years, I've trained and I've been involved with employees and assistants who've worked with me for years on end or for short term, long term, and I love teaching the skill and the, and the you know or I love knowing that. They're more skilled than I am in certain things, and right by my right hand side to, in order to get things done. I, I love working in the studio with others, and then you have technology almost made what I was doing kind of go extinct because it's a lot of work physically. Right, um, silk screen is like you, you got to be able to get up in the morning, go to work, and clean screens and you know whereas it's not digital technology so for a long time you know those people i was training were you know i thought okay you know i'm training certain people but i don't even want to i don't want to let them go because then i gotta start that all over so i've integrated the time period i mean um, so some of your work is digital printing no no. Not, okay. Oh, well, that's good no. to hear. I, no. I can't. The reason, that, the reason that I can't, st- I have a, I have a bias. I have a bias, only because I, I just, you know, when people say, "Oh, well, you can get this printed," I know this site where you can get this printed for that key, and it makes me totally nuts. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because no one has asked about, well, what's the quality like? You know. But anyway, well, that's a, that's a separate. And again, when you're talking about. Like, um, I begin to think more seriously about like where would I where would I land the the longevity of the studio when I'm no longer printing? Is it over? I don't right. know. It because right. it's not just me. It's right. So inside, in this year point, inside, um, there aren't a lot of places to to kind of land an environment like this, but they do exist in universities or they do exist in, inside of nonprofits or they do exist. So, you know, I've begun to think about it, but not with any urgency. Right. Doesn't I mean, seem like you need to do it urgently, but I, yeah, but, uh, cause you got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got time. You got time. Well, someone said to me recently in the last couple of months, we've been talking about business and stuff. And he said, well, you got to brand yourself. I know. Right? And I thought, oh, no. Oh, oh no. Here it comes. Okay. Here it comes. He goes, okay, don't worry about branding yourself. You're already, you're already who you are. He goes, but, um, but, but you gotta, you got to be able to create longevity. Like, when you're no longer printing, like, you can't be the only guy left standing. You got to, and 
And I said, well, I either can or I can't, you know, I mean, right. I mean, I'll either give, you know, the Beatles are the Beatles until there are only three and then there are only two. And, you know, I mean, what do you, life is, life is a little more complicated. Yeah, right. But I do believe that the collaborative environment is such an incredible learning experience for young and old and middle-aged artists that I wouldn't want to let it you know just yeah. disappear yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I was you see, Layton, that's why i said let's collaborate on this yes you know? yes because, because i you know i've been a loner for so long right and uh you know everything i do is now a collaboration because it it's just more interest you know there's an interest that i hadn't explored before so the last four years whether whatever i'm doing it's a collaboration decided to do this podcast i didn't want to do it alone so it's like oh another thing i'm doing alone let's so i called Layton. And Layton thought it was a good idea. We, and Layton had the brilliant suggestion. He goes, not, let's not make a form out of this. You know, let's just do it and just see where it goes. Let's have every conversation be a you know, and, 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 and edit it back. Figure out what the... We're not editing this. <laughs> All right. You know what? Okay. I would like... If, um, I just like... If you had one... If we if we had two to three like visuals, of course we're gonna have this video and we're gonna attach it to the right. to the episode, um the the audio episode. What what if you had one or two like like your aria, <laughs> like you 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 left the studio and you're like that what we just did in there that's all all that that's magic. Like where what do you have like a maybe maybe you have thirty of those pieces, but I'm just gonna. Like maybe you have two that you'd like to share with us visually. You don't have to do it now, but just think about it. Like show, showing an image with, with, yeah. with Ed where you go like, that just made me so happy for like weeks and months. Well, we did some, but we did right. a little video before. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there because I want you. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, and, 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 and I, I, I would do that. I am, you know, um, interestingly enough, because um, is it the visual that made you happy, or the experience with the artist? Oh, that's an interesting. You could you it could be a, it could be a paragraph, yeah, and not the and, and not the right. right. <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's my dilemma because I can. That's look, a very good point. I could look at a piece and say, "Oh shit, was I in a bad mood?" But I really liked him, you know. I really liked her, you right. know. You know, so you can't separate those. He fell asleep on the couch the whole time I was working. You know, like that. Well, well, you have to spray it out too, about art. Also, you don't let your emotions run everything. You 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 keep moving forward on it. Well, that is partially true, but it's also because of other people around me, like Melissa around me, who put up with my venting <laughs> when when I'm alone or. You can you fucking said that to me? <laughs> that's what we want to hear. That's the real, that's, the, that's what we want to hear. I can't believe I'm standing there praying. He says, you know, oh, well, you know, I think I'll go have some dinner. You know, it's like, yeah, right. Right. You know, and I, and I, and I have, and I have, I, I've got, a, I got a couple more stupid, really, I feel like they're almost obvious. Where about like, if I eat ice cream the night before and I eat too much sugar, my day is killed the next day. Right. What are your, what's your, crypt, what is, what a couple, what's a couple of your kryptonite? Too much smoking, too much, when I, when I, back in when I was in my 30s, I used to think that smoking a big bowl would get me, yeah. would, would get me there and it was actually yeah. all bullshit. What, what is your kryptonite? What is my kryptonite? Or okay, um, or 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 you know what I mean? I don't know exactly if I framed it. Yeah. No, no, I know what you mean. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to the studio and the creativity in the studio, everything you could you could take that for like a family visit. You could, anything anything that gets in the way of you not being Gary. Fully, red wine, red wine doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't I don't like red wine. You know. Okay, all right, that's but, a good. Thing. But, yeah. but but here's a you know an, an interesting story relative to my my livelihood is you know behind me are a bunch of ink cans, right? 
I love they're, those. And they're my old oil-based stem cans. For 35 years, I worked with a medium soap screen that was oil-based. So that meant that when you opened up the can, you started pruning, you were smelling xylene and paint mm. thinner and upper you know, respiratory uh, stuff like, for everything. everything. You know, not healthy. Okay? Right. Generally on a one to ten. It's not even it's, you know, it's just not a good thing. But artists as well, you know, always dealt with the material problems beyond the physical things they were working with. Oftentimes I found Early on, like this chemist who I worked with said to me, listen, Gary, you know, if, if you're going to work with silk screen with this kind of materials, my suggestion is don't go out and have a drink at the bar after work. Right. I was in my train. Interesting. And I said, well, why not? He goes, well, because, you know, the materials that get to your liver, alcohol, it goes to your liver. You know, you don't want to combine the two. I said, well, it's all right if I smoke a joint. He goes, oh, yeah, you can do anything do that. <laughs> So don't, don't drink right um, you know like that's not healthy you know? yeah no that's interesting we want our we, that's a good it's a good uh oh sorry so, so and i only use that story in that so 30 years later when i was switching from oil basin to water basin i had an interesting experience because i found like I didn't get that kick in the morning when I opened up right, the can yeah. of ink. Interesting. Well, right? I remember you used to wear a mask. Like, I used to wear a mask and all this stuff. But again, you know, the, but the motivational factor wasn't in the materials. It wasn't in the smell. It wasn't in the, it was in the visual. Right. What, what you're looking at every day. And I love mixing colors. So, you know, if I'm in it, if I'm, you know, if I could stay healthy and keep mixing color and working with color, then I don't need to drink the red wine. If I know the red wine is going right. to be a good day, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, like, actually feel like it weakens your body or something. Right, right, right. right. That's it, yeah. Um, in a yeah. lot of ways, you, you, not all, you you're, what you're talking about, your whole life is about creativity. I mean, you've created a life around it, you know, that, that not a lot of people get to do. No, I know. And I, it, it's always one of those things where um, if you, if you, you got to love what you do and do what you love. I mean, that's a, you know, that's statement of, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and, and Gary is part of my story a lot of, because I do, here was an artist who loved what he did. And I knew if I just sort of followed him around when I was 19. You know, we did a lot of stuff together. We traveled yeah, together. We, we did a lot together. Yeah, we hitchhiked together. But he knew he was going to be an artist. Yeah. I oh, know. wait a minute. Gary, did you did you two go to Joshua Tree together? Is this yeah. the Joshua yeah. Tree story? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Gary. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ed, Ed is sitting next to you because of that Joshua Tree, uh, so, you know, story. Yeah. All I remember were giant cactus. Right. <laughs> I heard they were moving and talking back to you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was the cows. Oh, oh no, no, the cows is up on Mount Tam. But again, you know, you know, and 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 says this in a, such a complimentary way. But it's another podcast of how two people in their twenties can influence each other. Yeah, in, in such a way, and come back years later and still find mm -hmm. the you know, the beauty of it. Um, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. So no, 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 that's, I feel love. I feel love. I think yeah. that's amazing. Uh, well, we, we did some yeah. amazing stuff together. You know? Well, and Ed was part of, you know, when I first, when, you say, when I found, look, you always want to be an artist. I don't know, but I was told don't be an artist because you can't pay the bills. So, right. you know, I was like, okay, no, how about if I, if I do printing, that like might work out like Tell people. But you had, a, you had a fearless streak in you. Right. But, in, in, but I, in, I know that I was driven by it. But again, um, the times that we spent together, I remember when when you love what you're doing, and you say you're in your studio, you're doing it, and musicians oftentimes speak of this. And someone says, oh, especially when you're young, you know, you're, you're driven to figure it out. 
let's go, let's go see a movie. And they say, no, 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 I, I, I need to be here where I am. Someone once said to me, oh, you're spending the best days of your life in your studio. You know, what? you need to come out and socialize. Right. Right. And you went like, uh, 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 okay, uh, you guys, you go spend the best days of your life socializing. Socializing, I'll be here. Right. I'll be here. Come here. Yeah. But those are decisions about what you asked earlier. How do you, how do you keep it going? How do you wake up and want to do it again? Or, you know, what, what makes... What yeah, motivates? Yeah. What what yeah. motivates? Not even. Oh, I think it sounds, I, I it think just sounds like a you, corporate a corporate workshop. What 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 you know like you know what just moves you to right. to go forward? Moves you to go forward. You know? And people will say good teachers do that or good experience. You know experience, but it's the good, the bad, and the not so good. You know. Right. Like, well, there's right. a lot of people out there teaching people to do stuff who've never done stuff. So, right. Yeah. So the the so and guys again you know you were just someone who you know just in closing just someone who really you know i saw as just like having that direction you were never going to be stopped i never felt you were going to be stopped and you were just always very positive about it and you went to sit you you went to san francisco you you didn't never hesitate i was a hesitator and but you, but you two I made it. I found my own. He's really, well, as a hesitator, you're currently now relentless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're relentless. So, you know, so I, you know, I'm glad. Yeah, so let's, uh, anything else you want to say? Any yeah, piece of work or anything? No, I, I you know, I, I will look in my, you know, through in my head, you know, what piece, what two or three pieces could be, you know, yeah. Or, about, or or to your point, um, if it's an audio file that you want us to like, it, it, it's a story without a visual because that's actually more meaning. Share whatever or, or a paragraph written. I think that's a really that's powerful. Um, I, I the way that you've said. That. Since we're not scripted, I'm going to take the camera off here. I'm just going to aim it toward the studio over there. So you get to see later. Wow. Well, I missed this trip, and I'm not going to miss it again. I'm going to yeah. here. Are you going to see me? Yeah, sooner than later. Out. Sooner than later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Make, I'll make it. I'll, we'll make some time. I'll come out there again with Ed um, and, and give you a visit. It's been really, I mean, it's just um, talking about creativity for me and um, only because, you know, somehow the num. well, let me, let me, I don't want to devalue what anybody else does. We, we, in our society, it seems like those people who are financial planners, mortgage brokers, um, doctors, they get some sort of pass <laughs> somehow. Sometimes I feel a lot of resentment because a lot of people, I don't think, value the thing that like the occupied world as much as like, you know, like everything is visual, touch, paint. And they, people will pass 30 sc screens, um, uh, prints, and they, they've changed their morning because of what they, what they actually saw. So I, I want to just say, and I want to honor you by saying thank you for participating in that visual environmental language. Well, and I, and I, I appreciate, I appreciate your, uh, your appreciation. Yeah, of course. I, cause I, I, I believe in it wholeheartedly. All right. Well, let's continue this dialogue. Okay. Uh, absolutely. You know, well, I'm going to sign off late. And, uh, All right. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. And thank you. And thank you for your time. Have absolutely. a good one, guys. All Bye. right. Take hey. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sound editing and theme music by Will Ainsley. Brian Rezepko was basically our mentor who really taught us all the technicals, showed us how to get this online. We would not be here without Brian. So thank you, Brian. The logo is by Layden Lewis and Sharon McLaughlin of Mermaid New York City. And um, if you're creative, we would love to hear from you. We would love to, to email us your story. And if we like it, we would love to have you on. Uh, we are looking for creatives to tell their story, what their challenges are, what they love about working in the creative field, what is working for them. Um, so until next time, I hope you guys listen. This podcast is for you. Thanks.